Hi, Nick Maxwell here with the CGY750 V2 uh, firmware update. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and touch on flight tuning and what the new parameters do in 3D mode and what the different combinations do to the helicopter based off your stick inputs and also what you want out of the helicopter. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is actually touch on the home screen. So the home screen actually tells you a lot of information about your flight tuning. Um, so the first, oh, passed it. Okay, so using the plus or minus mode button, uh, the first parameter is going to actually tell you your motor on time. Uh, the next parameter is OLED saver, so if you don't want the OLED on all the time, you can turn it off. Um, okay, condition menu. Earlier in the swash plate setup video, we talked about the different conditions and that there's two selectable conditions based off whatever you assign them to in the transmitter. Uh, that menu itself can actually be separated from all the other parameters. So any parameter that is possible to tune by condition selection or having two different complete sets of parameters, uh, it will actually go into its own menu with this switched on. They will disappear from the previous settings or pr uh, previous groupings. So when you do click that, it will be condition. It will be its own menu. It will show up in the uh, menus as you scroll through with the uh, data tool. So uh, some, some guys like it. Some people don't. I actually personally have mine off. Um, but we can go ahead and turn it on just so you can see the difference here. Okay. Uh, the next parameter is your roll max. What you'll notice is as you twist the helicopter and turn it all around, it will give you a reading. So there I reached at some point in time 250 degrees uh, per second. Um, this can be really useful in flight tuning. Uh, we talked a little bit about the swash plate uh, rate in setup and so this is a tool to use to adjust that. Not only if the helicopter is pirouetting flat or if it's rolling straight or things like that, but if you are not reaching your desired rate that means you're not delivering enough cyclic pitch or you do not have enough overhead. Um, so say you have your roll rate uh, in cyclic, we'll, we'll get there a little bit later here, it's set to 300. Uh, you can simply go up in your flight routine and do a roll, stationary roll. And if you do not reach 300 degrees a second, that might mean that you need a little bit more cyclic pitch. Uh, so that's a, that's a really neat tool. Same thing with elevator flip. And uh, then you've got your motor RPM. Uh, this is whatever your max RPM was. So if you, if you reach 2800 RPM or something on your helicopter, it'll show you what your max was. That's a good governor tuning condition. Uh, in this case, the next parameter is actually just showing which condition you're in. So currently I'm in condition two. I flip the switch and I'm in condition one. So back and forth, that's just kind of a heads up. Hey, you're in this one. Okay, and that covers the uh, home screen. Uh, so the next thing what we're going to do is using the plus data key, I'm going to scroll to flight tuning. And the first parameter there is going to be base gain. Uh, this actually has two functions. One, if you're using a Fataba radio and you have your rotor head gain, if you have seven plus channels, uh, you can set your rotor head gain via the transmitter. Uh, if you do not, say you're using a 6K or 6J, uh, those transmitters you will have to set if you want to remain, if you want to keep your tear rotor gain in your transmitter, then what you'll need to do is set it to inhibit rotor head gain in S bus channel and then use your base gain as your actual rotor head gain. So it works just like it would in the transmitter. The second function of this, um, in some helicopters, specifically F3C helicopters and scale helicopters, uh, it, it is wanted to run more gain than 100. Uh, for, for example, in an F3C helicopter, in the hovering condition, uh, you might want to run a base gain of 150. What that does is it changes your max gain from 100, when the transmitter is set to 100, to internally 150. Uh, it just moves your, your gain. For 3D, um, 100, if you have your gain set to 100, uh, in that case, then that probably means you still have a cyclic pitch. Uh, but for some of the, the unique applications, that's useful. So the next parameter is your cyclic rate. Uh, this is going to be your first condition selecting uh, uh, condition selectable parameter in flight tuning. Um, so this is just purely your cyclic rate. Uh, instead of using dual rates, you want to keep your resolution at 100 to make the helicopter feel the best that it can. Uh, so say you want the helicopter to roll at 300 degrees a second and flip at 300 degrees a second, um, you would set that in here. Without changing the dual rates, I can actually change my rate now. So say I want the helicopter to flip at 
107 degrees a second. Uh, so you just set that in there. And then when I click between the different conditions, uh, you'll see actually it changes back to the previous setting. So now in condition two, I have it set to 300. In condition one, I have it set to 407. So essentially with these condition selecting parameters, you can have two completely different helicopters in one. So we're going to go to the next parameter. This is Expo. Uh, same thing as tail rotor, same thing as everything else. The Expo can be set within the gyro. You can do it in your transmitter. Either way, same thing. Uh, so that's just your, your cyclic Expo and your curve. This is also condition selectable. So as I flip the switch, you can see it goes from C1 to C2. Next parameter is control authority. Uh, this is an interesting parameter because you do have to do flips and rolls to set this. And what it does is it changes the rate at which it reaches that angular rate that we just set, that cyclic rate. So the higher the value, the more the helicopter is going to accelerate and then stabilize to 300 degrees a second. Or the lower the value you take it, the more it will ease into it. So for example, for an F3C helicopter, I tend to set the control authority value rather low because we don't want it to immediately reach 250 degrees a second of roll. We want it to be smooth and precise. And what that does, by lowering this value, you can uh, actually kind of take the human error out of it a little bit. And when you peg it, it will accelerate smoother and slower to that. A higher value will yield a more aggressive or accelerated feel. Um, it might reach 500 degrees a second to stabilize at 300 right off center there to try to match your exact stick input. Um, on this one, this value does have kind of a useful range. Um, that's between 20 and 70. Um, anything outside of that, you might want to check your cyclic bit range. Either it has too much if the value is too low, or it doesn't have enough cyclic pitch if the value is past 70. Um, 40%, between 40 and 50 on most helicopters is actually a linear feel, so it tries to match your stick. Anything, like I said, lower is going to ramp up. Anything higher, it will quickly accelerate there. You have that parameter in bank switching as well, so you can change that with conditions. And you also have that exact same parameter for the elevator. Okay. Next parameter is flight style. This parameter is a little bit hard to explain because it is entirely a feel thing. Um, this in no way, shape, or form affects the way that the helicopter flies or feel or flies or holds heading. So, you know, if, you, if you're on a windy day versus a calm day, the gyro is actually going to work the same. What this does is purely change the feel. Uh, the default value is 50. That's kind of what you could say is a neutral helicopter. Um, it feels kind of what all the test pilots thought was natural. When the value is pushed up, what's going to happen is the helicopter is going to feel a little bit more robotic or it's going to stop more aggressively or a um, little bit more calculated feel to the helicopter. It could also, to set too high, feel a little bit sticky. Um, some guys like that. They like it to kind of hit and stay. Um, if you lower the value, it's going to make the helicopter a little more fluid. So if you're doing uh, snaking maneuvers and things like that, when it's changing directions, it's not going to stick in the direction change near as much. It's going to flow through stuff. Uh, and if you get that value too low, you could get a description that the helicopter feels a little bit too loose. Um, so there is kind of a useful range in that. Uh, a lot of that depends on helicopter. The best thing about this parameter is it really isn't going to cause you to crash. So the best thing to do is adjust it freely and tune it to whoever you want. The next parameter is elevator comp. What this does is it pre-compensates elevators. So a clockwise helicopter is going to need a certain amount of elevator input to really stay stable as you move the collective pitch up and down. Um, so here, with zero, the swatch plate is going to work perfectly flat. As I add, you can see the swatch plate tilts back and forth like this. What that does is it feeds forward in with positive and up elevator with negative pitch. Um, Basically, on a helicopter with slow servos, um, it can help because as you move the collective aggressively, it will help to keep the helicopter still a little bit more stable. The elevator axis has more mass to it, so that's why the elevator needs this parameter versus the ailerons. Um, but essentially, in most helicopters with high-performance servos and normal 3D rotor blades, you're not going to need that parameter. Um, like I said, for slow servos or for very heavy rotor blades, it's that it needs that little extra compensation, you can use that parameter. High pitch authority is also a field parameter that is kind of difficult to explain. 
feel free to just mess with it. Um, what it does is as you increase the pitch on either direction, high or low. At neutral, there's no, when you add cyclic, since there's no collective pitch or there's no input already in there, the, the helicopter can rotate very freely and very almost effortlessly. As you increase pitch, you're increasing the angle of attack on the blade, and then as you add cyclic, you're putting more angle of attack into the one blade at a certain time. Um, so the helicopter can feel a little bit slower. Also, it can compensate a little bit for some of the linkage in CCPM helicopters. Um, as you deflect it, the helicopter is going to move a little bit slower due to load and aerodynamics. And also, as you move, everything is going to become shorter. You get less throw, say, at full pitch versus neutral. What HP Authority does is it actually boosts your cyclic as you move away from neutral pitch so that adjusting this number you can make the helicopter flip and feel the exact same at say full pitch as what you would at neutral pitch. Uh, the best test that I found to do this is sit there in a hover and do some flips, kind of memorize what that feel is and then go in forward flight and flip forward or flip back in forward flight. If the helicopter kind of doesn't just immediately do it like it does in a hover or say it stutters uh, then the value is too low increasing HP authority could help. Uh, reducing the number could actually make it nonlinear. So um, if you get it too high, the best thing to do is back, out, back down. If you get it too high, what you'll notice is the helicopter tends to accelerate into stuff. So um, say you're flying across and in a hover, you know, it, it flips and, and rotates really linearly. If you're flying across and you give it full pitch and it kind of goes faster than what you want, then the high pitch authority is a little bit too high. Um, that's another number, just kind of play around with it and see what suits you best. Okay, so that covers the flight tuning, the basic adjustments. Um, so the next thing what I'm actually need to talk about is the rotor head gain and how you set that. Um, all your gains are set via the transmitter now, uh, so all of the parameters in the gyro are actually feel um, parameters or just kind of fine tuning parameters. Uh, the best thing to do is set your gain at 50 to start with. Go across the field, kind of jab it and hover, see if it's bouncing. If it's really bouncing bad, obviously you need less gain. Uh, if it's not stopping or coasting with default values, maybe you need to turn your transmitter gain up a little bit. The next best test is to come across in forward flight and just kind of jab the elevator. See if it oscillates, if it oscillates, bring your transmitter gain down a little. If it doesn't oscillate, if it kind of coasts and doesn't really hold, then your transmitter gain is probably too low. The best thing to do is get your transmitter gain set so that it's flying the best that it can with that before adjusting any of the flight tuning parameters. If you want to tune some stuff a little bit more detailed, there is the flight tune expert menu. Uh, what this does is you've got uh, number one, your dead band. Uh, stock is four. Uh, if you go lower, you are essentially reducing the amount of dead band and making the feel off center is going to be a little bit more precise. Um, what we found is that with most new Futaba transmitters, dead band 4.0, you'll never see any drift or anything like that, and you can go pretty low. It will change the feel a little bit. If you are noticing drift on the bench, so say your helicopter sitting here and after 30 seconds your helicopter swatch plate is all the way tilted over. Um, as long as there was no initialization issue, um, First, I would check to make sure that it is initialized right, so unplug it, check it. If it is drifting, it could be worn out potentiometers in your transmitter. The best thing is to send your transmitter to service and try to get it fixed. Um, if you do tend to notice that it is still drifting, you can always increase this dead band. That will reduce uh, drift. Usually that number is not needed. Uh, the next parameter is the heading hold gain for the aileron and elevator. This is exactly what is described. It's your heading hold. If you're flying across the field and the helicopter is slowly starting to pitch up or you feel that it's not following your stick inputs and ending where you want it to, uh, it could be the rotor head gain. Uh, so if you've got your transmitter gain maxed out at 100 and, okay, this thing still doesn't feel tight, you can increase your heading hold gain. Uh, the other thing that this is really useful for is for hovering. Um, you can actually boost this a lot and it will make it a lot more stable in a hover in that condition. Okay, the next couple parameters are the stop tunes for aileron and elevator. What this allows you to do, if your stops are not perfectly how you want, these values can change it by either making the helicopter coast more or stop more aggressively. Uh, so the best way to do this is to go and do some forward flight rolls, some stationary rolls, some, some forward flips, and some stationary flips, um, and just see what it's doing. If the helicopter is bouncing back, so say you do a roll or a flip, 
and the helicopter kind of kicks down and then comes back up, uh, you would want to increase your stop tune to soften that stop. If you're flipping, you're flipping, you're flipping, and the helicopter continues to coast a little bit after you let go of the stick, uh, you want to reduce that value. Same with aileron and elevator. Okay. Uh, the next parameter is head response. This is used mostly for scale applications or a helicopter that has really slow servos. Um, if you're using a scale helicopter where the rotor head speed is only, say, 700 or something, um, and you're starting to get oscillations, and either you can't get the oscillation out, no matter how low you turn the gain, no matter how much you reduce the pitch, etc., uh, then head response slows things down just a little bit, so that way you can try to time the gyro response with the rotor head response a little bit better. For most helicopters, any 3D helicopter out there with normal servos these days, head response at one is perfectly fine. So that actually covers Flight Tune Expert as well. Uh, so after that, basically, like I said, uh, feel free to tune those parameters. Uh, most of them don't affect your, the way that the helicopter holds. That's your transmitter gain. Uh, so that's the best thing about this version is you can go in there and adjust it to feel exactly how you want. So hopefully that helps with flight tuning and uh, the general setup and flying uh, the 750 V2 update.